Body Girl? Yeah, we just went to the Denver Springs Parade last week. It was great. It was good. Yeah, yeah. I was. We were thinking about going to that one, but we didn't. And then I'll miss Spanish Town this year again. But and we're gonna have a great career de Mardi Gras in Bill Platt. Well, the Denim Springs one was great. We caught moon pies and king cakes and Texas Roadhouse bread rolls and Texas Roadhouse peanuts. They had all kinds of things coming off those floats this year. So a whole lot of fun. Anyway, though, we're not here to talk about Mardi Gras. Today, we're here to talk about the new process of submitting award applications via AET. Uh, starting this year, all award applications will be completed in AET and the teachers will submit them to state through AET. And then they're all going to be graded through AET. So uh, we're we're moving in that direction. It's AET is a powerful tool. If you've never used it, if you've never looked at it, I highly encourage you to do so. Um, data collection is one of the parts of our strategic plan. And I don't currently know of a better tool that provides ag teachers and state staff with the amount of data that AET can provide to show your administration just how valuable your ag program is. So that's what we're going to be doing today. But speaking of applications, Raquel... I, well, you inspired me to think about Sunshine Quality Solutions and Sunshine Equipment. Um, we have a brand new link that a lot of people have been asking for, uh, for our Sunshine Sustainability Grant. Have you seen it? I have. It's on our website. Um, it's been <laughs> on social media. So hopefully teachers are finding it and seeing it and using it because it's a wonderful opportunity. Yeah, and it, I've been kind of aggressive with getting this new link out. Um, the old link was a little bit more complicated to apply for the grant, and I think that that may have deterred some people. This one is a lot more simplified. It's all on one page. You don't have to toggle through links. And um, they've done a great job. Sunshine has done a fantastic job with supporting the Louisiana FFA Foundation. We set records last year with the amount of contributions we uh, they that they made through the raffle that we did with the Gator um, and the Saints Gator raffle. So this new link is a part of a new system that we have access to now, which is really exciting. And it's going to process all the applications at once. And then the way that it works is you fill out the form. And then once a quarter, the board um, and the committee within the board that uh, makes awards uh, is going to distribute up to $1,000 for each chapter. And you can apply multiple times. So if you don't get it once, you can reapply. The chances of you getting it are really good. And the key thing that the committee and what Sunshine Quality Solutions is looking for is uh, quality equipment is looking for <clears throat> is uh, to show that your school's fundraising project, whether it be your greenhouse or your farmer's market or whatever it might be that you're trying to fund, um, your dog wash, whatever the fundraiser is, we want you to show that it's sustainable or self-sustainable. So if you can use the $1,000 to help get the fundraiser started and show that you can make over $1,000 or preferably over $2,000 through the fundraiser, and very important, show that the money, some of the proceeds that you receive goes towards the students and some of it goes back into the project for next year's fundraiser. That is what makes fundraising sustainable is that it can, you don't ask for the same money year after year after year only to make $1,000 or $2,000 that you try to invest back in your business. So what Sunshine wants to do is to teach students and what the foundation wants to do is to teach students and teachers and advisors how to have make their programming self-sustainable. And so we can give more funds year over year to more students. Yeah, and big thank you to Sunshine. Big thank you to all the Saint season ticket holders who bought raffle tickets. Thank you to the non-Saint season ticket holders who bought raffle tickets. I think we got in, what, Raquel, like a little over $30,000 this year to right. fund that, that program. So that's cash that's designed to go right back to FFA chapter. So if you haven't applied yet, please do so. It's a wonderful opportunity for schools to get a start on some sustainability uh, in their fundraising activities. And so much of what Louisiana FFA does teaches students how to be professionals, whether it be professionals in their career or just as leaders in general. And this is just a key aspect of professionalism in business management. So treat your chapter project just like a business, just like an SAE, and challenge yourself to be self-sustainable with a little help from Sunshine. Awesome. So speaking of applications, Raquel, would you mind hanging on with me here so we can walk through this new AET system? That mm -hmm. way we can answer any questions that ag teachers may have regarding how this is going to work. So we're going to take a look today at the AET award application system. Yeah. And I'm a pretty, I'm pretty novice when it comes. Oh, look, there's my link. Love that. <laughs> 
um, I'm a pretty big novice when it comes to AET as well. So maybe you, maybe I might be able to bring up some questions that sure. our teachers might have as well. So what I'm going to do today is I've uh, logged into Elton's account because I know that Miss Lana already had a couple of state degrees that were in the works. So I'm going to use this as an example just to show you how the process will work this year. So if you submitted an award application in the last few years, you know that your students have been doing the applications through AET. You can access this either through FFA.org or through AET. Just remember that for all award applications other than the National Chapter Award, the student has to create the application. The advisor cannot create a personal award application. So state degrees, American degrees, proficiency awards, ag science fair, Anything that's a, a student-only award, the student has to generate that, either through AET or through FFA.org. Anyway, once that is done, though, you as the advisor, you can see the applications that the student is working on, but more importantly, you're going to have to submit those to state in order to be scored and graded. So every advisor can log into AET. Even if you don't have an AET subscription, you can still log on to AET. If you've never logged on before, you should be able to access this using your LA four-digit chapter number as your username and password. And that will give you access to your teacher profile in AET. It'll look like this. It should have your chapter in the top left. That's how you know that you'll be on your, your profile. And it'll say teacher dashboard. What you're going to be looking for specifically for award applications is here on the reports tab. You can either access it here on this button or up here in the top tab. It'll take you to the same location. So if we click on this one, it's going to bring you to this page. You're going to see this third column that says reports and submissions. This tab up top is reports. That's where we are. So we're going to be looking at reports and submissions, and we're going to be looking at the degree application manager. This is what you're going to use um, for these award applications. So if we click on that button, it's going to bring up this list. If you've done award applications in previous years, you've probably seen this list before. This is a list of all award applications on file in your chapter that have been created over the years. So there's going to be a bunch of them. You can sort through them. Some of these are old. Some of these are new. Um, this is just the running list. You can also review them by selecting your drop down, which you see here. One thing that I do want to show you, this is just as an example, we're going to go to this student. We're going to, we're not going to look at the student's application, but I want to show you how it's submitted. So this is what the student sees whenever they're working on the application. Again, we're not going to open this up because I don't want to see all the student's info. But once all of these tabs are completed in, in AET, in the award application, and it's time to submit, you're going to have the student click on this bottom link that says print application. And when you open this up, you'll see that this particular student, there are checklists not met. See how the student has three not mets on the list. That means that this award application is not complete. You can't submit this one yet because there's going to be issues in the application that are going to have it tossed out. So if you look on the student's work on the print application tab, and you see the button that says, or you see the, the column that says checklist not met. If there's anything here other than zero, it's not going to work for you. So please so, don't try to submit something if there's still things to be fixed. And the student could, I see the button there. The student could press get PDF, even though it's incomplete and try to submit it to the, to the instructor, right? Well, and if, if you, be if you click on the get PDF button, it's going to let you download a PDF version of this application, but this does not submit to state. This will only right. let you download a version and it's probably going to have errors across it because again, you have not met on the checklist. So this one is not ready for submission. So let's go find one that is ready for submission. Uh, let's find this one. This is from Sydney. She was a state officer last year, or th she's a state officer this year. Sydney, you're a state officer this year, not last year. <laughs> and I think you have the not mets on the right column there right. too. So you can, can kind of go also, you don't have to go right. directly. Mm -hmm. You can also see them on this side. So if we look at Sydney's from last year, if we go back to print application, now we see that this has zero not met. This means that this application is completed. So in order for the student to submit this on for teacher review, the student needs to click on this button, Complete Save Your App. When you do that, it's going to create the most current version of it, and it's done, it's finished, it's ready to go. Now, you can come back and make corrections to it. Just make sure that you click Complete Save Your App again. Every time you click Complete Save Your App, you're going to get a new version number that's going to pop up. Remember, 
on award applications, version month numbers have to match. If you have non-matching version numbers on an application, it gets disqualified because that means you're trying to piece together parts of applications. Now, because we're doing this online submission, that shouldn't happen anymore anyway, because you can only submit one electronic copy. But I want you to see that for a student, what you're looking for is zero, not mets, and then you're going to click on complete save your app. So if we go back, so again, this is the teacher view. Once all of your applications are done, your students have clicked on complete save your app. Now you need to submit to state. This is new. This is what we haven't done prior to this year. You're going to see as a teacher this green button that says submission list and feedback. If you click on the green button, it's going to bring up this page. As the teacher, you should know what are you submitting? Are you submitting state degrees? Are you submitting Ag Science Fair? Are you submitting American degrees? Like everything is listed here from proficiencies to national chapter. It's all here. As the teacher, you have to submit to state. Remember in years past, you had to download PDFs, go to form site, upload the PDFs. We're not doing that anymore. Everything is being submitted from AET with a couple of exceptions, which we'll talk about here in just a second. So let's say we're going to submit those state degrees that we looked at. You go to the state degree list. Now, let me make this uh, correct or this clarification also. You'll notice that there are two versions of the state degree. One says AET state degree. One says Louisiana State FFA degree, non-AET users. If you're an AET subscriber, use the AET state degree because this one's going to be auto-populated from your record books. That's another huge advantage of using AET is that the record book will populate everything into your applications for you, and it saves you and the student a whole lot of time. So yeah, I mean, it sounds like if I'm, that's what I'm going to do. If I'm a teacher that doesn't have a lot of time and has a lot of data that, that I need to manage, I need to use the AET one or get AET and then use the AET option. It makes award application submission a lot easier than having to go in and hand enter all this information. So if you're an AET user, you'll use the AET state degree. If you're not an AET subscriber, you'll use the Louisiana state FFA degree. This one, you'll have to hand enter all your information. So let's say I'm using this one and I need to submit these applications to state. As the teacher, I'm going to click on this edit list button. It's going to bring me to this page. Now you say there's, there's nothing there. I can't see anything. You have to browse to find the application. So you click on this button that says browse. These are the applications that have now been submitted for you to add for state review. All you do as the teacher, and I'm not going to do this because I don't know if they're ready yet, but you would just click add, add. You, you add the applications that you want submitted for state review. Once you do that, these will disappear from this view and they'll be placed onto your submission list. So, so if, my student, see them here. if my student has pressed the green button or the button that said, you know, submit up to date one, it's going to show up and it has zero known nets. Yep. It's going to show up there when I press browse. That's right. If your student clicks complete save your app and there's zero not mets when you click browse on this page, the applications will appear in this section. And as the teacher, you click add, it's going to submit them for state submission and you'll see them populated here. Now, later on, once we start reviewing applications, you see some of these columns like check-in status notes. As we start reviewing from the state level, you're going to start seeing notes populate here. So teachers who are going to be grading, not grading, but teachers who are going to be reviewing state degrees, they'll have the ability to put in notes to tell you either why was the application rejected, why was it, anything they want to say, it's going to start showing up here once the grading process starts. So that's another huge benefit of us using AET this year. You and your students will get good real-time feedback as the award applications are being processed and scored. Um, we'll also give out scores for all proficiency awards also for everyone once the, this, the process is over. So today I mainly wanted to show you this is how you're going to be submitting your award applications um, this year. So I told you there were two exceptions. If you have middle school students who are submitting junior proficiency awards, you're still going to have to use the old system because junior proficiency awards are going to have a lot of not mets because they don't meet the minimum year requirement to get a senior award. Therefore, you can't submit it through this system. So if you're doing junior proficiencies or if you're doing livestock or equine exhibition, you're still going to have to do the old system where you download the application and submit it through form site because those are not compatible currently with the AET system. So one more time, if you're doing junior proficiency awards, or if you're doing equine or livestock exhibition, you'll still have to upload those through form site. Everything else is being uploaded directly through AET. 
And it seems like, it, I mean, as quickly as just pressing a few buttons rather than uploading and downloading, it seems like this is a much quicker option, like I said earlier. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a lot more efficient. There's a lot less chance for a teacher to make a mistake on it because you're not having to download, upload, download, upload. You're not having to worry about, is the file going to be too big to go on form site? We've had those issues in the past. It's all going to be here. And me as state staff, I can see in real time as these applications are being submitted and I'll be able to look more quickly because previously I also, after you uploaded to Formsite, I then had to go and download everything from Formsite. Mm -hmm. And it, it, yeah. it would take days and days and days to process all that. Now it's all going to be here in the system. Furthermore, once we start grading later on uh, end of March and early April, if you've ever graded um, SAE award grants for national FFA, you've seen this system before, what's going to happen for all of our teachers who are, who are scoring on your screen, when you go to grade, you're going to see two sides. You're going to see the grading rubric on one side, and you're going to be able to scroll through the student's application on the other side. So you'll be able to see line by line as you're going through the, the uh, scoring rubric to follow along with the student's application. It's going to make that process a whole lot easier, too, because you don't have to get on a Google folder. You don't have to download a ridiculous number of emails that I send you with PDFs. Like It's all just going to be there on your screen for you to go through um, as so you and this reminds me a lot of like a slogan that we have with Sunshine, our partnership with Sunshine and the sustainability grant. We say the future is bright with Sunshine. And that's what this reminds me of. The future is bright with AET. You know, the fact that we as a state office, as well as the students and teachers have a lot of a simpler, you know, so much less complex. It's a lot uh, faster and a simpler process. It makes uh, more time for working with students or working on projects and not working on a computer because goodness knows we spend enough time on a computer so yeah, that reminds exactly. me a lot of our, our partnership with sunshine <laughs> if you have any questions if you forget anything i just covered remember in aet these little icons are videos you can always okay. click on this icon and you'll see roger hanagriff pop up on your screen and he will walk you through exactly what i just showed you he'll it'll be like a little five minute video that shows you again how to do this um aet is full of of um of options like that to be able to click on buttons that show you videos and, and answer questions. So we're pretty confident that uh, this is pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy. Again, if you have questions as you go through it, always feel free to reach out to me and be happy to guide you through. Um, award applications are due at the end of March. Make sure you're checking updates. But one more time to make sure we're completely clear. Junior proficiency awards. You, right? junior, junior proficiency awards. Livestock and equine exhibition will be submitted the old way through form site. Every other award application this year is going to be submitted directly through AET to which everyone has access to, right. whether you subscribe to it or not. Okay. And really fast, can you show us the link that you had popped up for Sunshine a Sustainability Grant? Yep, I sure can. Let me show you how to get to it. How about we do that? Yeah, there's so many options on how to get to it. It's in okay. our foundation newsletter, which if you're not connected to, please sign up as soon as possible. You can email me. But it's also right there on our main page of our website. Yep. So when you get on our website, you watch here the rotator. There's one version of it. If we click on it, there's the grant. Yep. So it has a brief introduction. Yep. And then you just scroll down and it's just like any other form. You put in the information. Uh, now, what I would recommend, because it doesn't save a draft, um, I would recommend take a look at, you know, you know, the name of your school, you know, your address, all of that. But when it comes to these questions here, I would recommend if you if you haven't done this before, draft it out on like a Word document and then just copy and paste it in. There's nothing going to stop you from doing that. There's not like a major word limit, but it's going to help you kind of keep the data organized. Um, but it basically asks you to write a very simplified business plan. How much money are you spending? How much money are you going to make? What are your anticipated revenues and expenses? Uh, and then how much money do you actually anticipate earning or, or using as a net profit? And, and what are you going to use as an evaluation method to determine if your fundraiser is successful or not? Um, and you just use all those factors. Uh, and then we evaluate it to see if it makes sense, basically, if it's good business practice. And then you uh, will get your thousand dollar check, which is pretty great. And you can submit this up to four times a year, right? Yes. So I think the, the rules say you can only get the award once a year. 
but you can submit it four times a year. And we again, we evaluate it every quarter. Now, if and when you get the award, you will have to follow up within 12 months to show us how you use the funds. So photos, videos, all of that is super fun. And we love to see that. We love to share that with Sunshine since they're such great partners. They want to see the success you're having with their partnership. So make sure you track, once you get your funds, make sure you track uh, that data, track your expenses and revenue and receipts, and then also take photos. I mean, and you know what, even if you as the instructor don't take photos, chances are your students are taking TikToks or whatever behind, <laughs> behind you. So ask your students, you know, hey, did you get any video of working in the greenhouse today? We would love to see that at state convention or excuse me, at, at state level. And who knows, we might even share it at convention or at camp or, or in many other programs that we have throughout the year. Yep. Awesome. So get your sunshine application done, get your award applications done, get them submitted. And as always, if you have any questions, make sure you reach out to us. Thanks, Raquel. Thanks, Kate.